as you can see i very much entertain myself while doing this bingo sheet bingo sheet mm -mm -mm. Single ladies. Oh, single ladies. Hey, hello team. My name is Nick. Welcome back to the cauldron where it is time to do yet another. Did Monique actually follow her TBR? Did she go off on a path by her own into a wooden forest and, and left all of humanity behind? Also, called a wrap up. In case you didn't know, this is Book Witch Reviews, my channel, and I play a funky little TBR game every month called TBR Tombola that I made myself. In it, I pick seven numbers from a Tombola machine and I have then attached prompts to each of these numbers. At the end of the month, I then go on to do my wrap up and see if I can sort of cross out a whole line of numbers. And if I do, I am allowed to pick up a new book however i have yet to win though i have played since october last year i was going to sort of do a rewrite of my rules do tbr tombola 2.0 before i picked a new like bingo sheet because i pick a new bingo sheet every three months i might have to lengthen that so that there's a chance that i can win but yes these are my vague rules. If you would like to see the actual TBR for April, I will leave it linked down below. I will also leave links to my TBR videos if you would like to check those out. However, let's just jump straight into what I read this month. I read a whopping eight books, which is the lowest number that I have read this year. I also read uh, roughly 3,123 pages, which is very low for me. But to be all honest, April was a bit of a mess. I tried to do things. I didn't do them. I tried to live. My brain was not with me. So, you know, that's just the life that we are currently leading. I read six physical books and two ebooks. And the very first book that I picked up in April was Witches Steeped in Gold by Sian and Smart. This is a very shiny arc that my good friend Jack sent to me. It came out on the 20th of April. This is Yan and Smart's debut. It is a Jamaican-inspired fantasy world for young adult slash new adult audience. It follows two rival witches who end up having to work together for the common good. One of them is the former heir to the throne. However, her family was brutally slaughtered by the other witch's mother, who our new princess now is trying to dethrone. There is betrayal, there is magic, there is plenty of like loyalty shifting constantly. And I was very, very excited about this. I loved the writing of it. However, overall, I thought it was a little bit, not, I wouldn't say bland, but it just didn't entirely capture me. I am excited for the sequel though, because the ending is very exciting. But in the end, I just ended up giving it three stars, which was a little bit lower than I had anticipated because this is one of the ones that I was super excited for this year. But overall, it is just a debut and I'm excited to see what LCN and Smart has in store for us. Which has came on to my TBR as an Instagram pick at number 83. So let us see if I have a number already on my bingo sheet. This is a new one. We do not have 83. Can you even do this with a ring light? I don't know, but it's not there. We got 84 and 88. Moving on. The next book I read is a short story anthology called Hag, which is Forgotten Folk Tales Retold, which is a series of short stories inspired by Britain and Irish folklore. It is written by mainly uh, women from the British Isles and Ireland, also a few gender non-binary authors as well, which I thought was very exciting. I was super pumped for this because I absolutely love folklore and mythology and I don't know a whole lot of like folk tales from England and the surrounding countries. However, this one left me wishing a little bit for something more magical. It has that creepy folk tale lore, like something in the dark is coming for you atmosphere absolutely down. There were a few of the stories that I actually really enjoyed and I will definitely look into more from those authors. But overall, I ended up giving this a 2.5 star. So it was just okay, but not something that I'll be like, please read this for me because it was just it was very short story-ish but not in the way that I have now found that I actually really enjoy but maybe I only enjoy fantasy short stories. Hmm. Hag came on to my TBR at number 74 which is a re retelling or a mythology inspired book so let us see if we have 74 on my bingo. Shit. -na 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 -na. We do! We got our first number of the next quarter. We shall cross it. Wow. 
As you can see, I very much entertain myself while doing this. The next book I read was my favourite of the month, and that was The Dawn Hounds by Sasha Stronich, which is a very weird, very queer, adult sort of urban fantasy steampunk bot with plants. Yes, I know it sounds really weird, but it really, really works. This book is set in a world that instead of having technology and steampunk is sort of powered by plants and biochemistry has sort of taken over everything. In it we are following a disgraced cop called Yat who as a bisexual woman is seen as damaged good in this city. However, one day she sees something that she shouldn't have and the people who are sort of trying to take over the city kills her. It doesn't seem to stick though. Yat gets brought back by an ancient entity who has been sending people back for eons and her and others of her kind now have to work together to save the city that Yat loves. It is so fucking weird. This this is so this is so weird. It is like also I think like published by an indie publisher of some kind the like typesetting is not good but this is just such a mind fuckery that i love it with all of my heart we get passages from this like ancient god like as well as yat and others and it is just it's so good i really hope i think that i've seen that it is getting picked up by a traditional publisher as well so i'm really hoping for that but i'm hoping that they keep this cover because it is stunning so obviously you can tell that this turned out to be a five star for me i wasn't sure for a little bit but i can't get it out of my head so it's a five star the Don Hounds came onto my TBR as number 38, which means queer rep. Let us see if it is on my bingo sheet. Bingo sheet. Bingo sheet. Mm -mm -mm. Single ladies. Oh, single ladies. We got no 38, but we do got a new favorite. It is also by a Maori author, which I'm excited about. Yay. Next up, I suddenly felt supremely bad about not having finished some of my arcs. So I read The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni which was an arc that I had for April. I believe that it also came out in April on the like 24th or possibly earlier. I'll leave the, the actual proper publishing date here. This is a YA fantasy where we are following a young healer who has been stuck in this like death prison for the majority of her life because of her father and her family being rumored to be close with the rebellion. This prison that she is put in is sort of in between all of these countries and everyone sends their prisoners theirs and then they basically get worked to death. Our young prisoner, however, has small ties to the rebellion. She is hoping that they will come and get her. However, she gets told that for them to come and get her, she has to keep this rebellious leader that is coming alive. So there is magic. There is weird things. I was super like interested in the premise in the beginning of this book. And I thought that the first couple of chapters was super strong. However, I felt like the book really like never hit its stride it just sort of went the action went up and down and up and down but never like a like a straight up i used to know how to talk about story points anyway i just felt like the plot was very predictable as well and the ending really 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 annoyed me because i thought that it was going to end one way and i don't mind like books being predictable and I don't mind books being super unpredictable but I don't like it when they go in too hard on tropes and I felt like the ending was very very tropey. So I ended up giving The Prison Hill a three stars however I think it might be more like 2.5 stars because the more I think about it the more I know I get about that ending but still thank you very much to NetGalley for sending me an arc of this my way and I'm just sad that I didn't love it because I love healer stories and I love prison things so yeah but this one snuck in on my TBR does not have a number the next book was another arc that I felt like I had to get around to and that is The Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk and this really surprised me I absolutely thought that of this one and the prison healer I would love the prison healer more but The Midnight Bargain is set to be Bridgerton's meet sort of the magical and then it is smushed together. And it is very true. The Midnight Bargain is a historically set fantasy where we are following a young woman who is trying to prove to her father that she can be an asset to him without getting married. In the society, women with magical powers are usually 
almost sold into weddings so that families can have more magic in their family tree or if they choose never to get married and they have magic they turn into spinsters and crones and that is sort of when they are allowed to like play around with magic just a little bit however our young woman is having a very hard time choosing between marriage and magic because her family is in ruins and she needs a good match so that her family can continue to live in good health and we got like midnight balls we got fantastical dresses we also have like bargains bargains we also have bargains with demons and we have a very soft romantic possible like relationship and we have a friendship growing i ended up actually really really loving this one i highly recommend it to everyone that i know it is also written by a poc author and i am just yeah no this was really good i ended up giving it four stars i will definitely pick up other stuff by cl pope because i know that they also have a trilogy out as well stormtide something else i really want to read it because this one was really good the only thing that fell a little bit flat for me was the ending it had that super cute like epilogue where where things happen and you're just kind of like mm, i don't know if i needed that but i did love the rest and it made me cry at one point there are some spirits i love them yes wonderful next up i then decided to read the full series of nevermore that is currently published which starts with nevermore by jessica townsend is followed by wondersmith and then comes out with hollow pox which came out last year i'm still hoping that the fourth book comes out this year it might not be till 2022 this is a middle grade series follow morgan crow who is a cursed child who is meant to die on her 11th birthday however on her 11th birthday suddenly the very odd very mysterious very funny jupiter north pops up and says that if she wants to live she can follow him and he will introduce her to a society where she can try out to become one of them and he takes her to nevermore which is magical and beautiful and he introduces her to the wondrous society where she and many others of her age is trying to get an invite to is that a sentence? I feel like that's a vaguely sentence. But yes, this was wonderful. The very first book is super cute. It is absolutely adorable. Morgan is just like a little sour, very quiet young girl. And I adore her. Jupiter North is the is like the weirdest and the wonderfulest. And the Hotel de Kalian is also great. The first book I ended up giving 4.5 stars. I then read Wondersmith, which is, this is a second copy, and I'm really sad that I can't find the first book in, in hardcover, but I want it. I ended up giving this four stars because I felt like there was some of the, like, secret keeping that really annoyed me. It annoys me in any book, not just in middle grade, so that was, like, normal for me. And then... I read Hollow Pox and this is a five star. This is beautiful. It's my favorite in the series so far. Like the new, the unit and the friends and just, mm, I love them. I love them all very much. I'm very, very, very excited about this whole series. I believe there are going to be six books. I'm hoping for seven or nine. I don't know how many books there are going to be, but I want them all. So yes, only the two first books were on my TBR at number 66 and number 67. Let's see if they are on the sheet. Do, 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 do. We do not. We got 65 and 60, but that is okay. So those are the books that I read in April. I still had two books left on my TBR, being The Bone Witch by Rin Chepeko and Bloody Rose, which I have to read next month. And then I still get to sort of cross out their numbers if they are on the bingo sheet. But yeah, that is it for me today, guys. This is my April wrap up. Yeah, so we didn't do so well with reading this month. That's okay. As long as we got some new favorites, which we did. Nevermore, You Are My Love and The Dawn Hounds is just so weird that I can't stop thinking about it. If you would like to check out my TBR Martin Bowler videos you can do so I will leave them linked down below you can also check my actual TBR out for April where you can see that obviously I went slightly off course but that is okay I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to hit that thumbs up button hit subscribe button at the same time so you don't miss out on any other videos from me you can see me weekly try and read my TBR or you can just keep up with TBR Tombola if you click the little bell and then it will give you a notification when I put up a new video which I do regularly take care of yourself I'm proud of you you are doing great and I'll see you guys very soon with another video bye